Nintendo does it once again. They updated the 3DS family to 11.17.0. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to install custom firmware on your old Nintendo 3DS, 3DS XL, or 2DS. This guide is designed for old 3DS systems and requires a digital or physical copy of Mario Kart 7. This tutorial is designed for older 3DS systems. There's a more streamlined method for new 3DS and 2DS models. For those with newer 3DS systems, I've included a dedicated guide in the description and on the title card. I just want to mention that this tutorial is for educational purposes only. Anyways, I'm Anton and let's get started. First things first, you'll need a device running Windows, Mac OS, or Linux. Unfortunately, due to the programs used in this guide, you'll be unable to use devices that run on other operating systems. This tutorial is designed for older 3DS systems, which includes the Nintendo 3DS, Nintendo 3DS XL, and the Nintendo 2DS. If your system has the C-Stick nub, it is a newer model and is not really intended for this video. For this tutorial, I'll be using my blue 2DS, and a lot of these systems come with Mario Kart 7 pre-installed. If your system is modded or you think it is, I recommend not proceeding with this tutorial, as your system may get bricked. An easy way to check if your system is modded or not is to hold down the select button while pressing the power button. If this menu appears, then your system is modded. If nothing happens, you're good to go. However, one thing that you will need for this guide is a digital or physical copy of Mario Kart 7. This game is required for the process and must be updated to the latest version 1.2. This game is relatively cheap and easy to find nowadays, and has been pre-downloaded on many 2DS systems. There are some other methods that require other games, however they aren't popular titles, and most are digital only, which is why I'll be covering this method. But if your system is on 11.17.0-50, then you can follow this guide. And of course, this works on all systems running this firmware. It's also recommended to update the system's date and time. I'm not responsible for anything that were to go wrong while following this tutorial. But if you follow it carefully, you should have no issues, as bricking a 3DS is a rare occurrence. If you have any digitally purchased titles, they will not be affected. Just be cautious when playing online on Nintendo servers, as cheating can get you banned. But these servers don't have much time left, do they? Every Nintendo 3DS and 2DS system includes an SD card. You can use this one to install the custom firmware, but I would highly recommend getting a larger one so you can do way more and don't have to worry about upgrading. I picked up a SanDisk 128GB SD card, and it has been working wonderfully. You can go larger, but 128GB seems the most practical, and they are pretty affordable too. Make sure you buy a notable SD card brand, with a fast read speed such as 128MB per second, as loading times may take a while if it is too slow, and may even lead to some crashes. So don't cheap out on an SD card, as it will make your modding experience way better and will be worth it in the long run. If you have a micro SD card, make sure that you have an adapter because older 3DS systems don't accept a micro SD card. If your old 3DS system is on 11.16.0, I just recommend watching my previous tutorial and following that as it doesn't require anything extra. You can find it in the description below, as well as a title card. Now, if you're using the SD card that came with your Nintendo 3DS, you can skip this section. But if you are upgrading to a larger one, please follow it as we are going to be backing up all the files. But you don't need to if you don't care about the data on your old SD card. Turn your system off, remove the SD card, and place it into your computer. Once it's opened, you'll see a Nintendo 3DS folder. But you may even see a DCIM folder if you've taken any pictures. Now create a folder and name it something that you'll remember. I'll call my Nintendo 3DS Backup and drag and drop everything into your backups folder. Now eject your stock SD card and insert the one you're going to be upgrading to. Now, the SD card needs to be formatted to FAT32 for the 3DS to read it. If it is XFAT or anything else, it will not work. So for Windows, we're going to use FAT32 format, which you can find on my website in the description, and click the picture to download it. So just select which drive it is, based on its letter, and then press start. Make sure you do have the correct letter selected as formatting a drive will erase all data from it. So yeah, be careful as it probably wouldn't be a very good thing if you erased your entire computer's hard drive. I also recommend closing all windows to avoid any potential errors. If you are using a Mac, you should be able to format it using Disk Utility. Now just simply drag and drop your backup Nintendo 3DS folder into your new SD card, and everything should be copied over. If you are using the SD card included with your system, just connect it to your PC, and if you follow the upgrade process, your upgraded SD card should now be in your PC. 
So head down to the description and go to the Homebrew Old 3DS 11.17 page on the Antiretro website. Click Downloads and then click on the link. This will bring you to a GitHub page and click on the zip file to download it, which will include everything you'll need and it does not contain any copyrighted files. Extract all of the files and then drag and drop them into your 3DS folder. Now go back to the site and click on the Menu Hack 67 button, which will take you to another GitHub page, and click on the zip file to download it. Once it's finished, extract the folder and then drag and drop the Menu Hack 67 installer 3ds X file into the 3ds folder on your SD card. Now open the old 3ds folder, your region, and then if in the USA folder, select 11.17 plus, and then you'll want to place the launcher.dat file onto the root of your SD card. Go back to the site and click on the Cart Miner 7 button, which will take you to another GitHub site, and then you want to click on the release for your system. Since I'm using a Windows computer, I'll be downloading that one. Once it's downloaded, just go ahead and extract it once again. We won't be using it right now, but we'll come back to it in a bit. And there are versions for macOS and Linux as well. Go into the Nintendo 3DS folder, and you should see a single folder with a long name of characters. This is an ID code that gets assigned to every Nintendo 3DS SD card. Now highlight the ID and copy it. And now we are going to paste the ID so we can use it for later. If you happen to see two folders with long IDs in the Nintendo 3DS folder, just rename your Nintendo 3DS folder to old, and then place your SD card back into your 3DS. Turn on your system and let it create the essential files. Once it's done, turn your system off, remove the SD card, and place it into your computer. Copy the newly generated ID folder name, then delete the new Nintendo 3DS folder. Rename it back to Nintendo 3DS with the capital letters as seen here. This will leave all of your games and save data exactly how they were with no redownload required, and this should now only be one folder. Eject the SD card and place it into your system. Turn it on. Once everything is recognized, go into your friends list. If you don't have a Mi, it will prompt you to create one which means you'll have to go into the Mi Maker. I don't have one on the system, so I'll just create one from a photo. Yeah, that's cursed. Once the Mi has been created, go back into the friends list. Go through the prompts, and once finished, you should be assigned a friend code. Now return to your computer, and we're going to open Brute Force Movable, which you can find on the Antimetro website, and simply just enter your friend code in the blank space. Remember that long ID we saved earlier? Well, just go ahead and copy and paste it into the second blank space. Once you've entered both the friend code and the ID 0, just go ahead and press go. After a little while, it will give you a 3DS friend code. Return to your 3DS and tap on the orange smile in the top right corner, and then press internet. Now just input the friend code. The account may already be named, but if it asks you to name it, just call it whatever you want. Yeah, that me looks way more cursed than mine. Once the friend has been registered, turn your attention to the Brute Force Movable website, and it should take a little while to continue. Once it has been completed, it should now present you with a file titled movable.scd. It's completely same, so download it onto your computer. Now it's time for Cartminer 7 a method that tweaks the Mario Kart save data on your SD card. This modification grants you access to the homebrew launcher, while keeping all your data safe. Open Mario Kart 7. If you're prompted to update the game, please update it. If it's stuck on version 1.1, this tutorial will not work. Once the game has loaded, tap the Mario Kart channel button on the bottom. If you're prompted to, hit next, and OK to all the prompts that you see. Tap the Street Pass List button on the bottom of the screen in the middle. Press the Home button to suspend Mario Kart 7. Disable wireless connections by flicking the wireless switch on the side of the console or by navigating to the Home menu settings in the top left, and then turning the wireless communication off. Once you've done this, power off your console. Insert your SD card into your computer, 
drag and drop your movable .sad file into the resources folder of the release beta mk7 folder from before. Ensure that the file is named exactly movable.sed. Open the backup folder inside of the release beta mk7 folder. There is a Mac and Linux version available, and even though I haven't tested them, they should work the same, with a similar folder structure. Double click on the backup.bat file corresponding to your console's region. And if you're unsure of your console's region, you can check system settings, and you'll see beside the system's version. If you get a message from Windows Defender, click more info, run anyway. Then press any key to continue. If the backup was successful, you should see a new folder appear. Exit the folder, and click on the bat file that corresponds to your console's region, and allow it to run. Then press any key to continue. So go ahead and eject your SD card from your computer and put it into your system. Now power on your console. Open Mario Kart 7. Tap the Mario Kart channel button on the bottom. Tap the Street Pass list button on the bottom of the screen in the middle. Press A over and over again. Eventually, you'll see the bottom screen change to a bunch of different colors. If instead the 3DS crashes, just reboot and try again. And if you don't see any colors, change your system's language if possible, and then try it again. And if everything was successful, your 3DS should have booted into the 3DS ROP Exploit Injector. Now press Y plus D pad down to install Menu Hack 67. The console will automatically power off. Now power on your console. Tap on the home menu settings icon in the top left of the bottom screen. If the console freezes for a while and then crashes, make sure that you have launcher.dat on the root of your SD card. And if you've done that correctly, the console will boot into the homebrew launcher. Tap, uh... NIMSFAX. Tap NIMSFAX from the list. If your console freezes by any chance, then try running menu hacks again by rebooting your system and tapping on the home menu settings button. When prompted, input the key combo given on the top screen to load boot 9 strap. Once it is complete, press A to reboot your console. And now it should boot into the Luma 3DS configuration menu. Now press start to save and reboot. At this point, your console will boot into Luma 3DS by default. If your console is booted into the home menu, it is running custom firmware. Luma 3DS does not look any different from the normal home menu. Now launch Download Play. Wait until you see the Nintendo 3DS and Nintendo DS buttons. Press left shoulder, D-pad down, and select all at the same time to open the Rosalina menu. Select Miscellaneous Options. Select Switch the HP title to the current app. Press B to continue and then press B to return to the Rosalina main menu. Press B to exit the Rosalina menu. Press home to suspend download play. Press the close button on the bottom screen to close download play. Launch download play. Your console should boot into the homebrew launcher. Now launch the menu hack 67 installer from the list. Select Remove Menu Hack 67. When you see Done, press A, then press A on Exit to Menu. Once loaded, press Left Shoulder Trigger, D-pad down and select all at the same time to reopen the Rosalina menu. Now go to Miscellaneous Options, and scroll down to Dump DSP Firmware. Press A to select it, and then press B. Now scroll up to Nullify User Time Offset, press A to select it, and press B again to exit. Press B twice, press Home to suspend Download Play. Press the Close button on the bottom screen to close Download Play. Now you can re-enable the wireless connection on your device. Now we're going to launch God Mode 9. Power down your system. Now hold Start while pressing the Power button. This will launch God Mode 9. Use the volume slider to increase the brightness. If it asks you to create an essential files backup, press A and then press A once again once it has been completed. And if you are prompted to set the RTC date and time, 
Press A and set the date and time. Once you're finished, press A to continue. You should now be at the God Mode 9 main menu. Now press the home button to reveal the action menu. Select scripts, and then select finalize. Press A to continue, then press it again. Then enter the following button combination. The process will then begin. This will back up your system and install all the essential apps. Once everything's completed, press A to power off the device. Now insert your SD card into your computer. Open up the GM9 folder, then go into Out. Create a Backups folder on your computer, and then drag and drop everything in the Out folder into your Backups folder. Once it's finished copying, you can delete everything in the Out folder. Feel free to delete the launcher.dat file on the root of the SD card, as well as the menuhack67 installer file, as well as the nimsfax folder. Now let's restore the Mario Kart 7 save data. Go back to the release beta MK7 folder from before, and then go into the backups folder. And double click on the restore bat file corresponding to your console's region. Then press any key to continue. And then reinsert your SD card into your console. Turn it on. And congratulations, your Nintendo 3DS or 2DS is fully modded. Now you can unwrap all the applications and explore the world of homebrew. Now let's take a look at all the applications that the package provides. First up is an enemy, which is the theme loader that can allow you to load up themes, including custom ones. Check out the theme plaza to view, download, and even upload your own. It's a great way to customize your system. Next, we have Checkpoint, which is a save game manager. It allows you to make backups of your save data, and you can also load up cheats. Just don't use them online. Next, you've got the Homebrew Launcher, which allows us to launch Homebrew software, including .3ds X files that do not appear on the 3ds Home menu. The Universal Updater at first glance may seem like some random configuration software, but upon closer inspection, it's actually a Homebrew store that allows you to install and update Homebrew applications. There are many cool ones to check out, so I recommend exploring them. Next, we've got the Aid Shop, which includes Homebrew applications not found on the Universal Updater. Next, we've got FBI, which is an open source title manager for the 3DS and it even allows you to scan QR codes. FTPD3DS is a tool for easily transferring files between your 3DS and computer using an FTP client. And finally, we have God Mode 9, which is a complete file manager. Not only can it back up your system's NAND, but you can also back up your physical collection. Anyways, I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, consider leaving a like and subscribing to see more heading your way. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below, and you can also check out the Discord server. And with that, I will see you all in the next one.